Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to write our first TypeScript program and we're going to answer the important question what exactly is TypeScript? So TypeScript is a strongly typed programming language that is a superset of JavaScript. So it's like JavaScript on steroids if you want to think it like that. It gives you better tooling and it helps you to write your programs and avoid typical mistakes of the JavaScript language. Any valid JavaScript program is also a valid TypeScript program, but not the other way around. Let's then see TypeScript in action for the first time. Let's switch here to our IDE. So here I have opened the WebStorm IDE and you are going to create here a folder in your file system called Fundamentals. For the moment, you don't need to download any code from our code repository. The initial examples that we're going to be showing are very simple. So you can start with an empty folder and here we're going to be writing our first JavaScript program. Next, we're going to convert it to TypeScript and we're going to talk about the differences. So let's add here a new file that I'm going to call 01Y TypeScript. And let's give it the extension .js for JavaScript. So we're going to write here a simple JavaScript program. The goal of this simple program is to illustrate some of the limitations of the JavaScript language and how TypeScript builds on that. So let's start by defining here simply a variable. I'm going to call it name and let's give it the name of the course, for example, TypeScript Bootcamp. Now let's say that we would like to write here a new function and the goal of this function is to print the course name to the screen. So we are talking about the simplest of programs here. This function is going to take here an argument. We're going to call it name. And now here inside it, all we have to do is to print out the name to the screen. We're going to add here the text the course name is and we're going to concatenate here the name which at this point in the program we assume that it's a string. So there is nothing here in the program that ensures that this is going to be a string. In JavaScript we could pass in here a number, we could pass here a boolean, an array, an object, anything. The fact that we don't know the type of the argument name that is getting passed here, in this particular case it's not problematic. But now let's modify a little bit our program and let's convert here this name to uppercase by calling the to uppercase method. So here in this program, even though it's very simple, we are already making here some assumptions about the name variable. So we are assuming that this is a string and that it has been filled in correctly here by the caller of this function. Let's call the function. We're going to call here print course name and we're going to pass in the name variable. And with this, we are calling the function in this simple program. We happen to know by inspecting the program that because this is a string and because we are passing it here, that this won't be a problem and the name of the course will be converted to uppercase. But imagine that we would call this function here with, for example, a numeric value or that we call this with, for example, an array of numbers. What do you think it would happen? This is still valid JavaScript. It would run in the browser and we would get a runtime result. This program does not violate the rules of the JavaScript language. However, this simple program is clearly wrong. If we run it, we are going to get an error for sure. Let's confirm this by going here to our terminal that we can open in WebStorm using Alt F12 and let's run this simple program. The simplest way to run this program is to use the Node.js runtime. So let's go ahead and let's confirm the directory where we are on. We are going to cd into the directory where our file is, in this case the fundamentals directory, and here we are going to be running our program using the node executable. So we just need to run node and then we need to pass in the name of the file that we want to execute. Let's go ahead and let's run this program and see what happens. So as we execute the program, we can see that we get here the course name is TypeScript Bootcamp, correctly converted to uppercase, but then let's see what happens afterwards. We get here name dot to uppercase is not a function. So a very typical type error of JavaScript that I'm sure that you have found many times in the past. 
So as we can see, JavaScript is a very powerful and flexible language, but it also has a few downsides. It's very easy to commit mistakes while creating a program. We can call this function independently if the input argument is a string or not. If we pass it a string, it's going to work OK, but if we pass it anything else, we're going to get an error, and the error will only occur at runtime, when we are running this in our node server, but also in the browser. If we would add this file here as a script tag in an HTML page, we would get the exact same error in the browser, the exact same type error. You might be thinking at this point, well, all of this is normal. This is just the way that the JavaScript language works. And you are correct. But now imagine that the language would help us to prevent this error. Imagine that we would get here an error message at compilation time while we are building our program in development mode. That would help prevent so many bugs in our programs. Also, imagine that this variable changes its type from string to something else. Wouldn't it be nice to have our development tools highlight that that could cause an error elsewhere in our program? Well, all of this and much more is possible with TypeScript. Another thing that TypeScript enables is better tooling. So let's say that, for example, we would like to change the name of this variable to course name. Now, notice that this did not break the JavaScript program. If we head over here to the terminal and we clear the console and we run here our program again, this time around we're going to get here this runtime error, which is a reference error, name is not defined. This error simply means that the name variable is not defined anywhere in the program, and this is normal because we have just changed it to course name. So let's go ahead and let's fix this issue by replacing here the variable name. This is another example of where the language could have helped us to prevent this error. So, how does TypeScript work exactly? How does it prevent all these errors? How does it enable us to have better development tools? Let's have a look at it in action. We're going to simply switch here the name of our file from .js to .ts. And with this, our JavaScript program is now a TypeScript program. As you can see, we get here no compilation errors, and this is because all JavaScript programs are valid TypeScript programs in most circumstances, but not the other way around. This is great news because it means that if you are a JavaScript developer, you can immediately start using TypeScript without any problem. It's not like learning a completely new language. But the question here is, what is the big difference? The big difference with TypeScript, like the name of the language indicates, is that we have a powerful type system that helps us to detect all these issues with our program. In the case of our program, the TypeScript language allows us to add here a type annotation using here colon string. This type annotation simply tells the TypeScript language compiler that this name variable is supposed to be a string. And I can even print the type of a variable here by using control shift P. So as we can see, this is supposed to be a string. So whenever we use it here inside this function, we're going to have some powerful auto-completion functionality that provides us here all the member variables of the string class and nothing more. This advanced and very precise auto-completion feature makes it much easier to write our programs and is typical of languages like Java or C- and it usually doesn't work very well in JavaScript because of the absence of the type system. But here in TypeScript, it works perfectly. But besides the auto-completion, we also get here, look, highlighted in red, a compilation error. And we can see here the error message on the IDE. Argument of type number is not assignable to a parameter of type string. And same thing here, if we hover over the error, we're going to get that the number array type is not assignable to a string. So we are getting here compilation time errors that are indicating to us that our program has a bug. 
and it's going to allow us to fix and detect these issues very early in the development cycle. We don't have to run our program and get an error just to find out that it's wrong. The language tells us about it much earlier. So in the case of our program, we can go ahead and we can remove these two incorrect statements and call here the print course name function just with a string. And what about the use case that we talked about before of variable renaming? Let's say that we rename here this variable to something different. Now, all of a sudden, the compiler is going to give us a list of the different parts of our program where we have to change the name of the variable. We get here an error, cannot find course name, and we now know that we need to use the new variable name. As you can see, this feature is super useful and makes it a lot easier to refactor our programs. With TypeScript, you will never be again afraid of breaking your program just by renaming the name of a variable. So I hope that now you understand the benefits of the TypeScript language. Let's then quickly summarize everything that we have learned in this lesson. TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. It extends the capabilities of the JavaScript language with a powerful type system. The presence of the type system allows us to catch many errors at development time. We get useful compilation error messages that tell us immediately where our program is wrong before even having to run it. The powerful type system also enables tools such as autocompletion, refactoring of variable names, and it will allow us to maintain our programs in an easier way. We can change the names of variables around, we can change the position of files in our file system, and the TypeScript compiler will always indicate to us exactly where we have to adapt our program in order to avoid breaking anything. As we can see, the TypeScript language has a lot of advantages over plain JavaScript. It makes it much simpler to maintain large and complex code bases due to the improved tooling, the helpful compiler error messages, and the ability to refactor and maintain our program over time without fear of breaking things. The benefits of the TypeScript language are of course much more visible in a larger code base. This is a very simple program, but even here we can see how the error messages prevented a series of potential bugs in our program. Now the question is, how do we run this program in Node or in the browser? Because Node and the browser runtime only know about JavaScript, they don't know about the TypeScript language. So how does that work? That's what we're going to find out in our next lesson.